Well, welcome back YouTube pipe smokers to the Spurgeon Piper. This is Wilson with you. So today for our Friday tobacco review, we are covering Aaron Moore Flake. Aaron Moore Flake. Aaron Moore Flake has been around for quite a while. Um, it's the, the recipe from what I understand has been around for well over a century. And, and so we're covering it. Um, it's one that's been on my radar for quite some time and I finally uh, picked some up and we're going to get into it. Um, I am currently smoking it out of uh, more of a recent pipe purchase. And this is my Ashton's uh, Army Mount 220. Now let me adjust the, uh, the focus here, let you get a better look at it. Oops. There you are. So this is an Aaron Moore 2, oh, excuse me, sorry. This is Ashton's 220. And as you can see, it is an Army Mount. One of the more recent pipe purchases I have made. Uh, poker shape, as you've noticed. So I've mostly smoked uh, Virginia Burleys out of this one as well. I don't think I'll actually designate it that. It's just what I've been smoking recently out of. So um, I've thrown some English here and there in it as well. And I think it's even some Virginia Perique. But currently smoking Aaron Moore. So to give you a little bit of background on, on Aaron Moore and, and even background on why I picked Aaron Moore, uh, when I began to get into burly blends and like kind of uh, give more of a focus into them a couple of years ago or a year and a half ago, um, I, I really fell in love and really enjoyed University Flake as you guys have probably noticed. I've, I've mentioned it several times and, and then I got into some other burlies. Uh, but always in the background was Aaron Moore, um, and, and it seemed to have this, uh, it just seemed to pop up like one of those blends that you just have to try, like Orlick, you got to try Orlick if you're a Virginia Perique uh, enthusiast, um, at least once you got to try it. So Aaron Moore was always there, but I was always buying other tobaccos. Finally, I got some in, um, and I, I've been looking forward to trying it, and so I have been trying it for a while, and now we're going to get into the review of it. So before we do, let's... Uh, look at some background on it, um, the the tin description, if you will. So on the tin description, it says that the leaf tobaccos for Aaron Moore are selected from only premium tobacco growing regions of the world. The blend consists of mature Virginia, mellow burley, and sweet dark air cured tobaccos. It is pressed into cakes and aged, cut into slices, slices providing a mellow and cool smoke with flower, flower, E, excuse me for that, a fruity note. Uh, it was formerly blended by Murray and Sons in the UK until 2005, so keep that in mind. Now it's produced by STG, the Scandinavian Tobacco Group, which Orlik uh, it produces, or it's, in, it's produced in the Orlik factory in Denmark. So I want to let you know up front, um, it, they are the same company that has picked up and produces your Peterson blends. So, um, bear that in mind actually that's going to come up here in a moment so stg produces it blends it manufactures it so it is blended or on uh, tobacco reviews.com it is labeled as an aromatic not everyone labels it that way though i've noticed um, the contents are burley virginia and black cavendish all right so uh, this it isn't a pure virginia burley blend it does have black cavendish keep that in mind um, the flavoring is floral essences, fruit, and citrus. It's a flake form. Comes in 50 gram tins. Apparently 100 gram tins, so I haven't found it. Uh, you can currently get it in smokingpipes.com, Cup of Joe's, uh, tobaccopipes.com, uh, Pipes and Cigars. You can get them in those places. I usually don't see it out of stock, but don't take my word on that. So with that said, let's more get into a tin note, and then I want to let you look at the blend itself. So as you as I said, it is a it, depending where you look, it's an aromatic um, blend or it is a just Virginia Burley blend. Here we are here. Uh, tin description or note. You pick up the grassiness of a Virginia. So not much though it is matured, I don't pick up the maturing in the I don't pick up the matured Virginia so much in the blend, mostly just like a grassy note. Uh, the burley is like a hint. Maybe vaguely you can pick it up, but it's overmasked by the essence that's given to it. Um, it says citrus, it says floral or fruity. 
and I just pick up like a medicinal fruit. Uh, it, it's not real pleasing to the nose, I'll be honest with you. Um, it was kind of a turn off when I first smelt it. And then to give you a look at it, uh, it's it just looks like a, a Virginia Burley Flake. You can see some darker hints of uh, uh, the burly, or brown burly, matured Virginia, some lighter flakes there of Virginia as well. And I'm not going to show you, but I did compare it to flakes of the University Flake because th these are just really close in similarity and they almost look identical. So uh, bear that in mind. As far as preparation, I, I do I do always almost always uh, rub out flakes. And so they look like a, um, a rubbed flake or a broken flake that you could buy. Um, and it, it smoked well. The, the uh, moisture level was near enough perfect that I didn't bother airing it out any hardly. Um, it is on the wetter side, but I didn't have any problems smoking it at all. So um, maybe it required a, a bit more lighting than a usual blend that's more in the perfect realm but it, it wasn't significant so with that said all that information let's get into the smoking experience itself and the notes we pick up uh, i have maybe a half probably more of a third of a bowl left here So going into it, as usual, I, I think of, okay, what blends are similar to this? Uh, and, and University Flake was like one of the first ones I thought of. Um, so that, that's always in the back of my mind as I've been smoking it. I want to touch first on the Black Cavendish because it's the minor role. And I want to, I just want to really quick get that quickly out of the way. Um, the Black Cavendish, I really haven't seen a it play a major role and, and normally that's going to be the case for um for black cavendish when it's added in into a, a major blend you, they just kind of loot kind of lays in the background and, and it does uh, i think it helps cool this blend down so let me give one point to this one over university flake i think this is a cooler blend than university flake may contribute to the black cavendish itself The mature Virginia is more noticeable. Darker fruits. Um, there's there's a hair of, of more hay notes in it, but um, I do pick up the a darker the matured Virginia that's in play here. So it it it, it seems to be more Virginia forward. And of course that citrus essence is probably helping to to highlight the, the the fruity essence or fruity notes already there and established in the the Virginia leaf itself so that seems to be more forefront the, the more forefront in the blend is is the Virginia um, the burley is evident it's it's woody it's it's you know the, the nuttiness of burley I'd say it I'm spitballing here. Um, I would say it's probably a darker burly than a, a lighter one. Um, I seem to pick up light burlies, and usually I don't like light burlies, and I don't pick that up here. So on the essence, the floral essence isn't like a Lakeland essence, which oftentimes is called a floral essence. That's more floral perfumey. So if you're familiar with the Lakeland Essences, uh, this you're not getting that. Uh, the and, and I don't even taste the citrus. Um, I taste a fruity... I guess I just taste a floral fruity, which doesn't really offer you much. Um, it's like a sweet fruit. So not citrusy, not like a tangy citrus. Uh, this one is just... I don't know, and I and I and I really can't place my finger on giving you an example of what it tastes similar to, because sometimes it almost tastes so creamy, fruity, like it's a like a fruity yogurt. Um, so maybe if you get a, 
I don't know, um, uh, cherry yogurt or, or something like that. You know, it's, 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 and it's not cherry flavored. So don't, don't, don't read too much into what I said there, but, um, it, it's just a sweetie, a sweet, creamy note to it. Um, the floral notes is, is there, um, and it's quite consistent though. The blend is quite consistent though. I, I, I kind of feel like the burley picks up as you go through the blend. Um, but I do view it's more of a Virginia forward blend than it is a burley. And, and that's probably helped by the, the essence interplaying with the Virginia's more than, than the burley. But I, as I also, let me, let me add again, uh, this is a cooler smoke. I, I can lose my, uh, my cadence rhythm with it and, uh, it's not going to push back on me too much. So that is a plus. Uh, so let me get into some comparisons on this. Um, because comparisons can be helpful for those of you who are unfamiliar with the blend. Obviously, I said University Flake because it's very similar. Virginia Burley, Virginia Burley. This one has a citrus uh, floral essence or fruit essence, I'm just going to say. University Flake has a plum or berry essence, depending on who you're talking to or where you read. Um, I still prefer the University Flake. Uh, I even like the essence more, the topping more than this. Um, and I like that it's a bit more burly forward. Um, at least it tastes burly forward more to me than this blend does. So I lean more University Flake. That would be a more superior blend for me, or maybe not superior. Be one I'd grab more towards. Uh, but this one wavers on me. Um, depending on the pipe, I tried it in my Peterson 107. I tried it in uh, this 220. I tried it in my Eric Nording, and depending on the type, depending on the day, my rating can fluctuate. Uh, I put this around like a seven. It could be a better day. It could be up to a 7.5 or higher. Um, some days and some pipes, it's even lower, but this is probably a great candidate for a love hate blend. Um, because some people love it and some people hate it. Um, I guess I don't fall into that necessarily. I don't love it. I don't hate it, but it's not my favorite. Uh, it has a good bit of ratings, 365 ratings with a 2.9 rating. So it does kind of fall into that category of uh, there's there's a lot of love and a lot of hate, and so it falls in the middle on the rating. Um, the nicotine is about a medium. Uh, I don't get lightheaded with this, so uh, it's definitely no more than a medium for me. Um, the flavoring is about a medium um, as well, along with the taste. And with the essence, it is more of a pleasant note. So for you pure burly guys, if you're wanting something that maybe pleases others around you, but you want that burly still, well, hey, this is a good candidate because it's that essence is going to come out and it, it's an aromatic in that sense. So um, I guess you could call this an aromatic like, the, like Tobacco Reviews has it down. And hey, there you go. Uh, so... Seven out of ten, I would give it. Again, not my favorite. I could happily finish this this ten out, and I'll be satisfied. Um, but I would not pick it up uh, probably again because there's just other things I'd rather have. So uh, there you have it, Aaron Moore. Um, if if it's something, if you're a Virginia Burley guy, if you like aromatics, try this out. Maybe this is a good entryway into more. Um, meat and potato blends like Virginia Burleys. Um, maybe it'll, it'll kind of give you that entryway into um, blends like that. So there you have it, guys. Um, next week, we'll be back Tuesdays and Fridays, um, barring any major schedule difficulty. And um, I'll have uh, more upcoming videos on tobacco reviews on Friday. So I hope you guys have a blessed weekend um, and that you're doing well. And until then, we will talk to you soon.